Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. Happy Pentecost Sunday. This is Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome you to our online broadcast and worship experience. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today. And so we just want to welcome everybody, even all of our first timers, all of our Spirit of Fire people. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and set your watch parties, click your shares, um, put it out there for people to see and to hear this word and this message today. Listen, I always think it's, it's, it's stingy for you to receive something that's life changing, transforming, but you never share it with anybody. It's always important to share what it is God is doing with, through and in you. So I just want you to take this opportunity, go ahead, grab your juice, grab your coffee, get yourself ready um, for this word that's about to come forward today. I believe that God is going to share something with us that's going to be transformative. I believe it's something that's going to ignite something that's in and ignite something in you. And I just do believe that God is doing something wonderful in the earth. Um, as I'm as, um, uh, just sitting here getting ready or standing here getting ready to minister this word, I just had the opportunity just to get away for a brief second um, to just kind of do a little mini sabbatical just to pray, hear God and see what uh, the Holy Spirit is saying and preparing for today and to minister to you all. And one of the things um, that kept ringing in me was this passion and fire. So I'm going to deal with today uh, power and passion, talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. And so our name, Spirit of Fire, really comes from that. Um, I remember my wife and I, we were driving, heading to it. Uh, it may have, I forgot exactly where. It may have been somewhere close by. We were on the road. And as we were driving and I was praying in the car and the music was playing, I just heard this phrase, Spirit of Fire Fellowship. And so even as I heard it, um, I knew that was the name of the ministry that God wanted us to start. And so this was probably four years prior to us starting the ministry. And so, but I knew it. And so I shared it with my wife, but I knew there was something to this. And as I began to tell different people, everybody began to say, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's you. That fits you. And because of just the level of ministry and the way that I would flow and function in ministry, that people would identify. And it was just passion and fire that I would have even as I preached, as I prophesied, as I ministered, whatever I did, I gave it my all. And so this is one of the things that as I begin to speak this word to you today, I believe it's going to resonate with many of you. And so I, I began to pray about as I was away, I began to pray about vision and ministry and things of that nature. And so um, all, I, all I began to do, and I'm ready to just share this stuff. I'm trying to go through the preliminaries and all of those things. I'm really ready to just dump this thing in you and to just release it and to share it. But one of the things that started out, this scripture came to me and this phrase came to me first as I began to pray. We're going to get ready to pray. But before I do that, um, I heard this phrase, open your mouth and I will fill it with wisdom and understanding. Open your mouth and I'll fill it. And so I began to see and to hear wisdom and understanding. And so this scripture popped up to me in Luke 21 and 15. And it says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. So no one could can deny the wisdom that's about to flow out of your mouth. So when this thing comes out, it's going to come out with such force and with such power, it cannot be denied. And so just throughout my life in ministry, I begin to see God intensify when he's talking to me about go teach my people who they are and walking in the authority that we have in Christ. And so even with that, speaking the word with authority, speaking it with power, speaking it with conviction. And it was all tied into this. And so um, I, I'm, I'm going to just I got my notes here. I'm going to move with them. But today we celebrate when the Holy Spirit entered into the atmosphere, when he came into the earth, after he tag teamed with Jesus, when Jesus died and was resurrected, he says, if I don't go, the comforter can't come. 
And so they tag team and he entered into the earth. And when he entered into the earth, there was a rumbling, there was a shaking that people heard the sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And so now we understand that he invaded this earth. He invaded the atmosphere and he's here with us today. And so um, as a child, um, I, I can't help but to think back on just re re revisiting my childhood and how God will begin to deal with me and my hunger for the Holy Spirit and the things of the Spirit. I remember my aunt, um, when she told everybody, um, this is when we came from Baptist circles to non-denominational circles, word of faith and all of that. And I remember she was the first one that went and she came back and told everybody about this church. And so all of my family migrated over. And that's why I was introduced to the charismatic move, to the Holy Spirit and who he is and how he functions and how he manifests. And I remember sitting in services and seeing arms grow out and legs grow out and blinded eyes open and deaf ears open and seeing the miracle working power of God. And I remember, man, Looking at my older brother, I remember this one time we saw this guy arm um, just shoot out and he was crying. I was like, man, did you just see that? And let, now you gotta understand we're teenagers now and we're exposed to this environment, this culture of faith, this culture of the movement of the spirit of God, this culture of the Holy Spirit coming in. And so now I begin to develop a deep hunger for the things of God. And I remember crying out to God and asking him, you know, to show me who you are. And I remember my pastor told me, he would tell us and teach us that all you have to do is ask God to reveal himself to you. And so I went, I took him at his word. I said, okay, this is what pastor said. So I'm gonna go ahead, God, I'm coming to you. I'm asking you to reveal yourself to me. And I remember this particular night, this was a Monday night. Now, we, when we came into this movement, when we came into this new ministry, I may have been around 11, 12 years old, um, might've been a little younger, but I remember going up with my family, with my mom um, and my brothers and stuff to join the church. And, and I remember raising my hand to get saved. And I did that at the Baptist church, but I, it, it was something that was missing. And so when I began to, to come up and um, you know go to church and I would go and I would always sit in the main sanctuary. I never really went back with the teen church and stuff like that at that time. And I remember being in the main sanctuary and hearing pastor talk and preach and it, it, it developed such a hunger in me and i remember i was around 16 years old this was a monday night um in may i remember i, I remember just like it was yesterday may of 1991 i believe it was my junior year in high school and i remember uh, we had a preacher in town and he was preaching on how to obtain and maintain a strong anointing and so i re listen i remember what i was wearing I remember that night so vividly and so clear in that moment. And my aunt even said afterwards, she was like, Michael, I knew you was going to go up to that altar. I just knew. I think she told my mom maybe, or she told me as well. And I remember going up to the altar. And I remember just having this, this thing where every Sunday when pastor would preach and he would give the invitation, there was something in me that wanted to raise my hand, but then it, kept, it was something that was trying to hold me back from doing. And I remember this particular night, I was like, you know what? I'm raising my hand, I'm going up to the altar. And so this guest minister was there. And so as, as he preached and he gave the altar call, I went up and I remember they took us to this side room. And I'll never forget my, my brother who was going on home to be with the Lord, Reverend Leroy Banks. He was leading the altar workers and he would get people you know, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And they had this side room where they would do that. And so I remember him laying hands on me and taking me through this prayer of receiving the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And I remember lifting up my hands and opening up my mouth, and I sensed a floodgate of power, a flood of power flowing out of me. And I mean, I began to pray like I've been praying for years. And, I, and that was something that God marked my life and he transformed my life forever. And so two weeks after that, we were at an event for our family. Um, my older cousin, he was graduating high school. And so they had an event and the youth pastor at the church that they were part of, he came. And so he began to prophesy. And some of you have heard, heard this testimony before, but for those that haven't. And I remember this guy began to prophesy over each and every child in the family, all of the grandchildren. And so when he got to me and what they did was they videotaped it. Um, and then also they recorded it on a tape, a cassette tape. 
So I'm kind of dating myself here with that. So, <laughs> so now you see, as he began to prophesy, one of the things I remember, I remember writing down that prophecy and I could quote it verbatim. And one of the things he shared was this. He says, I'm going to bring a great freedom in worshiping me. I'm going to bring a great freedom in living my life through you. And he says, you brought those desires before me. He says, there are things that you've been praying in private that you brought before me. And I remember I just broke and I cried and I just lifted up my hands because God was speaking directly to me. And he was using this guy to prophesy over me. And then he says, you're going to move in the gifts of the spirit of God. You're going to flow in the gifts of the spirit. He says, there's going to be the discerning of spirits moving upon your life. I'll give you the ability to speak into people's lives and to see the things that are binding them up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free. And so I remember just, I took that thing. I took that recording and I listened to it over and over and over and over and over again. And I remember I could quote that thing. I wrote it out on paper and it was a scripture. In, um, I think it's in second Timothy when it talks, when Paul is talking to Timothy about give yourself holy and complete. He says, don't let anybody despise your youth, but be an example to the believers. And so he says this, he says, give yourself holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Give yourself completely and totally to these things. For then your prophet will appear to everybody around you. So when you get immersed in this thing and you give yourself completely to this thing, people around you are going to begin to see. Then fast forward. After that, then I graduate from high school. And that summer was a time where I sought God like never before. There was a thing where God separated me. And there were times where I was listening to and God used different ministries and I would listen and watch ministries. And while I'm watching the presence and the power of God will enter into the room where sometimes I'd be prostrate on the floor, face down. And sometimes I was almost in, in a couple of instances, I was afraid to open my eyes because I could sense someone in the room with me that I could not see with my physical eyes. But I knew there was a presence there with me. And I knew because as I started worshiping and fellowshipping with God, he was manifesting himself to me. And then as time went on into my young adult years, and there, there were things that God began to deliver me from and set me free from. And he began to grow me and he began to develop me because of that hunger, because that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I remember even as time went on, then all of a sudden manifestations of the gifts of the spirit began to take place and operate. And I began to prophesy. And I remember speaking words of tongues with interpretation and, and speaking in services and beginning to speak with people. And, I, and God took me through a, a big learning curve where I had to learn. And there were times I made mistakes and my zeal got the best of me. You know, I had great zeal, but sometimes didn't have the wisdom to go with it. But then I remember one service, this one of the elders of the church grabbed me after service after I began to prophesy before the people. And she said, and she explained to me what it was. And I was so grateful um, for that individual who grabbed me and began to say, okay, this is what is happening. This is what's taking place. And so God used people around me to develop me in the gifts of, of how to flow as a minister, how to flow in the gifts. And I began to watch and I was introduced um, to Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry and my pastor at the time, Pastor Steve Parson, you know, Brother Hagin was his spiritual dad. And I began to see Pastor Parson function and flow in the gifts. And I began to see things take place. And I grew up in that environment. So I grew up accustomed. I grew up in the culture of the supernatural. And so, but I always had this thing where even as a child, I would sit around and listen to um, my aunt sharing things about what God was revealing. Even as the, my cousins were playing and things and I can hear her talking. There was a part of me that was being nosed and I was listening in because it captured my attention. And so I became so, so enamored with the Holy Spirit and who he is, how he functioned. Man, it, 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 I was so excited. And then as God began to use me, I began to just see no matter how much he would use me. It was like I was a child, just 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 the hunger just the anticipation of that thing. Now I'm telling you all of this for a reason. And it's coming into what I'm going to preach today. Because as I was praying and as I was in, it was just this time of man, I'm telling you great intensity in my life. I mean, great discipline. I mean, there were times where the Holy Spirit would tell me at any moment to go on a fast for three days, nothing but water or juice. And then sometimes, I mean, to the point, my mother used to ask me sometimes, okay, Michael, are you eating today?
because she just didn't know when God, because just how God was dealing with me, how the Holy Spirit was ministering to me. He was getting me ready for what I was created and called to do. And so now as I'm saying them this stuff, some stuff going to start welling up. So I need y'all ready. I need y'all drawing and pulling right now because something is going to manifest. It happens every Pentecost Sunday. I, I, I can't explain it all the time, but every time something begins to manifest. And so now what we begin to happen is this. As I begin to grow in the things of God, God was disciplining me in things so that I could be a conduit for his power to flow. I mean, from times where I couldn't walk in this particular night, I couldn't even walk up straight because the weight of God's glory was so heavy as the Holy Spirit manifested that you listen, everybody in the room could sense the power of God. And there was such a reverence. There was such a presence. Then fast forward. He says, OK, I'm calling you to ministry. And I never forgot that word. I never forgot that phrase. I never forgot that name, Spirit of Fire Fellowship. And it was something about it, the fire of God. And a lot of times we talk about the Holy Spirit and we talk about Holy Spirit and who he is. But then all of a sudden this came back to me. This scripture came back to me. Now, before we go there, I want to go ahead and pray real quick. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge will flow freely uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And right now I declare and decree that I have the tongue of the learned, and that I speak a word in season to those that are weary and to those that need to be refreshed today. Thank you for a rekindling, a reigniting of the fire of God. Your power and your presence like never before. And so, Father, we give you praise and we covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Let it be like a surgeon, Father, a skilled surgeon ministering and tapping into areas. I pray that your power begins to manifest where people are right now, even in their homes, even as in the early church, they met house to house. That father, now this word is going out into homes all around this world. And so we thank you for it in advance in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory, praise and honor for it. Amen. Amen. All right. In the book of Luke chapter three, in the book of Luke chapter three, and I'm going to start in verse, and I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation, verses 16 and 17. And it says, John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the shaft from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into the barn, but burning the shaft, the chaff with never ending fire. And so we begin to see here and I begin to look at this. And so this this term, the Holy Spirit and fire, Holy Spirit and fire, that when the Holy Spirit comes to abide in you, the fire of God abides on the inside of you. Now, I want to read something else real quick before I move forward in this. Out of, Luke, out of Acts, I'm sorry, Acts 1, 4 through 5, and then verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5 and verse 8. This is in the King James. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. He says, But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me. He says, wait for the promise. He says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Verse eight says, for, but you shall receive power, power. You shall receive power. That word power is the Greek word dunamis. Where we get our word dynamite, it's explosion, explosive power, it's ability. 
He says, watch this. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, up on you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, when we talk about this fire, this fire by definition means it's a passion or an intensity to accomplish the will of the Father God himself. It's to be intense. It's to be passionate. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you not only receive him as a person, you receive, watch this, think about his personality, everything there is with him. And so when he comes, he now brings fire. He brings an intensity. He brings a passion. See, I remember this. I've been an intense person. When I get to preaching, it's intense. When I get to doing stuff for God, it's intense. I remember living this life as a single young man. It's intense. And I'm telling you, out of this relationship with God, out of this fellowship with God, came a fire and a passion to preach his word. Came a fire and a passion to see the captives free. Came a fire and a passion along with this authority. It, whenever I would see the enemy working in anybody's life, there would be something that would rise up in me to now say, I want to drive that devil. I want to drive that sucker out of your life in every area. Why? Because when the Holy Ghost came, the fire of God came. When the Holy Ghost came, a great passion and a great intensity came as well. Now watch this. There's a reason why I'm saying this. In the book of Acts 1, 5 and 8, the people were told to wait until they received this power, which also produced a passion to be a witnesses. So not only did they receive this ability, but they received the intensity, the ability and the attitude behind it. Come on, you got to hear me. It's hard to effectively do something for the kingdom of God if you don't have the ability to do it. But also the passion or the intensity for it. You got to have a passion and an intensity for this thing. See, passion will cause you to stick with it even when things don't look favorable. Passion will cause you to stay there and listen, it will cause you to have an unwavering intensity to get the job done even as time goes on. The passion and watch this. He says this and going back up to Luke in Luke 17, 317, he says this. He is ready to separate. Um, oh, man, how I want to see. Oh, man. He says um, he's ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork, then he will clean up the threshing area. But with this now, watch this. He says this, the Lord is fanning the flames of your passion again. He says, I need my people for those that have become stagnant for that passion to be reignited again. Because over a period of time, there's been dormancy. There have been things where people have become complacent in areas. And God is saying this, even over this past year, people have gotten comfortable being at home. People have gotten comfortable not coming together. People have gotten comfortable not serving the way that they used to. And sometimes it took a time for us to see that this is going to be important because with this is going to come everything else attached to this. Now watch this because I got something else I need to share with you concerning that because I'm going to go ahead and share it. I'm going to go ahead and share it real quick. <laughs> and I'm kind of getting out of, out of rhythm with my notes, but it's okay because I'm right here. In other words, what's happening is with this, with this winnowing fork, when he mentioned that um, in Luke, he says this, the winnowing fork is a tool similar to like a pitchfork. And what it's used to do is to lift harvested wheat up in the air into the wind. And so when it goes up in the air into the wind, the wind would then blow away the lighter chaff, um, allowing the edible grains to fall to the threshing floor or a large flat surface. In other words, it removes what's light and then only what is of substance and weighty will remain. So now watch this. The fire of God, he says this, when my fire shows up, 
it will weed out and separate things from our lives that we don't need and cause to remain what we do need. When you are on fire for God, he says this, you won't have to tell people and things to leave. They will automatically begin to drop off. So you don't have to watch this. He says you can't be afraid of separation. Because what began to happen is when I begin to seek God, it wasn't that I was intentionally, in, intently trying to leave friends and influences, but just because. And I was always that dude that was always a little different. Even some of my friends said, man, we always knew you was going to be a preacher, man. It was just it was just you was just different. You were separate. And see, when God's hand is upon you and I remember running into an old classmate in a grocery store. This was after we had graduated high school. And she looked in my eyes. She said, Mike, you different. She said, there's something different about you. I didn't say anything about what God was doing with me and in me in my life. But she saw it in my eyes. She saw something is different about you. Something has changed. And can people see a difference in you? Can they see a change in you? Is there something that separates you? You better hear me when I'm getting ready to tell you now. God is saying there has been too much intermingling of things where the world and the church start to look alike. And he said there is a fire that is going to be ignited that will begin to reset, that will begin to separate again to show the distinction of who we are as the church. It's time again. He says, watch this. He says, the reason why some of you have not been walking in any power is because you acting like the people that you're supposed to be ministering to. And he says this, I'm getting ready to come and to visit. He says, for those that desire of me a greater intimacy, for those that desire a deeper fellowship and relationship, for those that desire for the power to show up, he says, now fellowship has to be your priority. Fellowship with me. As you fellowship with me, when you come into the room with people, your presence will demand an explanation. It is not like you're trying to demean people. It is not like when you just in the power, in the presence of God, and you come out with the power on you, something is different. There are things you can't stand. It's not that you're being judgmental. It's just that you begin to heighten your sensitivity to spiritual matters. And there are things, listen, I know what that's like. I know when God told me, he says, I want you to cut off the television. And there was a point in my life as a single man, he says, I don't want you watching any television for a while. He says, I want to be the first person you talk to when you get up and the last person you talk to when you go to sleep. And I would get up and I would go to morning prayer. I would go to work. I would go to church, serve, do what I need to do, go to classes, come home. And I would not be able to turn on that television. I would go to my room and I forgot how long it was. But what he was doing was he was causing that shaft to be separated. He was causing the light stuff to be separated. And what happened was I became more spiritually sensitive at that time. But also I began to see the power of God begin to manifest greater in my life and ministry. And I remember going to this after that time I started looking at television again. I remember going into this video store. It was Blockbuster Video. And I remember going in and I remember all of a sudden I felt this nauseous feeling in me. And I felt this feeling. I'm like, what in the world? And I almost felt like I was about to throw up. And I didn't realize when I looked up, I was looking for a video somewhere. I was near the horror section. And then there was this room. And at that time, they had this closed in room where they had pornography. That's where all the pornographic movies and everything were. I could literally feel or sense the spirits that were on those movies. I could sense it. And I was like, oh my God. It was like, it was so repulsive. I was like, man, I got to get away from this. Why? Because at that time, I've been so separated from that stuff and been so in the presence of God that anytime I came around anything that wasn't like him, I began to have such a level of sensitivity, it was ridiculous. But it was based off of that time spent with him and that fellowship time spent with him. And what began to happen, I began to see that over a period of time, when I went back to normal, mundane routine, that even though the power would manifest at times, it wasn't to the same degree. 
in which it was that time and I was fully engaged and I knew it. See, this is why I tell people, I was like, listen, I'm going to tell you the good and the bad and everything that goes with it, but it's up to you to choose. I'm not going to judge you based off of what you do because it does matter what you listen to. It does matter what you read. It does matter what you watch because that stuff gets in you. And what happens is it begins to dilute the power or the ability from manifesting at the level that God wants it to manifest. I've been on both sides of it. There is a difference. It's just like the, the natural. It's just like, yeah, you know ice cream is good, it tastes good, but you know it ain't the best for you. you listen, you can't eat it all the time. You can't eat it in abundance. And then don't exercise, don't do any of these things. And see, watch this, it's like the, it's the balance of diet and exercise. And all I'm saying is this, I'm not judging anybody. I don't demean anybody. But you got to understand what you read, what you see, what you hear, what you speak, it impacts your life. And now watch this. Is God going to be dominant or is the world's way of things going to be dominant? This is the shaft being separated. He says when this fire shows up, this is why when you get into the presence of a holy God, the Holy Spirit, he's holy, he's pure. And when you function in him, stuff that's impure, you have a sensitivity to it. And it's almost like, uh, I, I, I can't watch that. Or I can't, I can't roll in that, in that environment. Y'all might be cool with it, but once you tap into a level of power, and a dimension of the spirit, when you've tasted of the good word of God, when you've tasted of the spirit of God, when you've tasted of supernatural things, you don't want to go backwards. You don't. Because you know what it's like to feel his power upon you in a certain way. You know what it's like. And what the spirit of God was saying is, Mike, it's time to fan the flames again. It's time to reignite things again. It's time for a level of intensity to increase again. I mean, because see, what happens is when you become complacent, then all of a sudden you become lazy and lethargic. And God is saying, it's time to amp up things again. It's time to pray like you used to pray again. It's time, whether it's fasting and praying, whether it's worship, there was an intensity in worship. And for us as a ministry, for us as a people, there needs to be and there will be an intensifying of worship, praise and adoration towards our God because it sets up an atmosphere for the miracle working power of God to take place. God is in heaven and he's saying and he's calling out. There is a clarion call going out to the church. He says, I want to manifest stuff to you. I want to show myself strong to you and through you. I want you to see these things but you're going to have to cooperate with me and believe me and trust me and have fellowship with me so you can recognize my voice when I'm talking to you. He said, there's this time that's coming. Also, the Lord is fanning once again the flames of your passion again. He says to get up and get back into the ring and fight again. Fight the good fight of faith. He said, man, he says, not only have you been given passion, but power or ability to do the job well. That's why I call this message power and passion. Power and passion, the Holy Ghost and fire. He says, not only have I given them my ability, but I've given them the intensity in which they need to fulfill this thing. Okay, let me, let me say it like this. I remember one time the Holy Spirit showed up to me. He spoke to me and said this. He says, Mike, he says, I want you to take seriously the call on your life. You need to take it seriously. And so as I thought about what he was saying, I was living for him. I was doing ministry work. But I'm like, okay, God, why are you telling me? Like, But I knew it. The minute I, I did know what he meant. And when he spoke it to me, it was like, no. You, in other words, this is it. Let me break it down. In this simple statement, you're not giving it your all. You're not giving it your all. You give some, 
but you don't give everything you got because you know what's in you. You know how you used to be with some things. And he says, don't you let anybody water down with the intensity in which I placed in you. Because sometimes what happens is this. Some people say you're doing too much. Uh Uh-uh. And see, sometimes the thing is people don't understand the calling and the command behind the call that drives you. See, when God visited me, when God showed up and gave me vision, he also let me know these are things that are beginning to take place. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, somebody is going to miss out on something. If you don't preach that gospel, somebody may die in their ignorance. If you don't preach that gospel, things won't take place the way they were supposed to take place. And I will hold you accountable for it. And God is saying the same thing. What is it that the Lord has said unto you? What is it that he said? What is it? Have you lost that edge? Have you lost that desire? You used to be gun ho You used to be disciplined. You used to be strong. You used to preach to anything moving. He said, what happened? What happened? I remember moments I was waiting for somebody to open up a conversation. I was looking for any door to begin to minister to them. What happened? What happened? He says, there's a fire that needs to be rekindled. He says, you have abilities that you have yet tapped into. He said, this is how, watch this. Some of you have the ability to do things extremely well, but you don't have a passion about it. And it frustrates those around you because some of them wish they had some of the abilities that you have. Because they feel as though that you are wasting what you have. There's some people that are wasting the ability. And God is saying it's time for you to get your passion about it. You need to settle it once and for all. Is this what I'm called to do? Let me give it everything I got. I remember I went to this pastor, this uh, bishop locally here, and I began to just meet with him, talk about ministry stuff. And he began to just share stuff with me. And so I was going to get get some wisdom and counsel and I began to write down the stuff that he was saying. And all of the stuff that he was saying was stuff that I knew. It was stuff that I already knew, information I already knew. And after spending all of it, spending that time with him, there was this one statement that he said that was the very thing I needed to hear. And the one thing about the one thing, and that's the one thing I even see with his ministry. He said this one thing. He said, brother, give it everything you got. And that's the, that's the statement I'm making to you. Brother, sister, give it everything you got. Don't you get complacent with where you are. God is saying it's time to come out of complacency. See, complacency is you just being satisfied with where you are and you don't want any more. And God is saying this, uh-uh. Now there's a difference between contentment and complacency. Contentment is having the right attitude and thankful and grateful for where you are, but knowing that, hey, there are other levels that I'm going to achieve, accomplish and conquer and I'm moving forward. See, complacency is almost like maintaining. And when you maintain, that means you're not advancing. And he says there should always be something that your faith is working on. There should always be a faith project you're working on. There should always be something that you're moving towards. There should always be something. There should be levels that you're going to from faith to faith and glory to glory. Then I begin to define power. I said, all right, God, what's this power? What's this ability? The Thayer's definition of power. It means this. It means it's an inherent power that's residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. It means to put forth. It's power for performing miracles. And this is another thing I like. It's moral power and excellence of soul. Not only outward power to demonstrate and to serve others, but inward power for your character and strength. See, I I taught on this years ago, the dual working of the Holy Spirit. The spirit within is for character. The spirit upon is for service. 
Sometimes people, you using this, your gifts to serve others, but what about now that inward ability to serve yourself and to now work on your own character and moral stability, your own level of excellence? The same Holy Ghost that comes upon you to lay hands on the sick is the same spirit that abides in you and the power and the ability in you to say no to sin. It's the same power that says, step your game up. You're living and functioning beneath who you are right now. And the Holy Spirit is saying this, I want to express the fullness of who I am through my church. Through from the inside out, from the inside out, people should see your character as well as seeing your surroundings. Do you say you're a man or woman of excellence, but you live in filth? Do you say you're a woman, a man of excellence, but now you broke, busted and disgusted and your life is a living hell? Are you a person of excellence? So he's saying this. He says, I'm coming to clean house. I'm coming to separate the wheat and the shaft. I'm coming to remove stuff that don't belong in your life. And I'm going to put some stuff that does belong in your life. And some of you are thinking that you're going to miss out on something if you go with God. He says, if you go with me, I will cause you to enjoy life. I will cause you to live out your dreams. I will give you friends to replace the ones that you lost. And God is saying this is your eternal salvation, is your eternal security, is your eternal reward. Because you got to understand something. If you don't learn it here, you will learn it in the next life. He's saying this. We are. He, come on now. He's saying this. He says so many people are so you are so now focused. They're so earthly focused that they're not even considering eternity, that they are supposed to rule and reign with me throughout eternity. This is just your training ground. If you don't learn how to function as the righteousness of God here, even though you'll make it to heaven, you will have to learn things there that you should have learned here. You're going to have to learn how to function there, how you're supposed to have been functioning here. Earth is just a reflection of heaven. I'm telling y'all, see, earth is God's taste. Earth is God's thought process. Earth is God's creation. It's, oh, come on, man. I, I'm, oh, whew, you better hear me. God is saying this. This is your time to rule and reign in life through and by Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying this, don't get comfortable with just waking up and going to work and going to sleep and waking up and going to work and going to sleep and waking up and going to work and going to sleep. And all you doing is waking up and going to work. You go to the grocery store, you go to sleep, you look at ministry online, but now are you producing what it is that you're hearing? Are you now going out into the earth and making a mark that can never be erased and get ready spirit of fire he says this you are going to make a mark that can never be erased not only will it shake up your world it's going to shake up the world of those around you and god is saying this where you had just started to lull and say you know what i'm in a good rhythm i'm in a good place he says uh-uh there are more levels to this come on he says come up hither Come up higher. I'm not going to allow you to be complacent. I'm not going to allow you to just settle for where you are. I'm not going to allow you to stay there. He says, arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You better go ahead and get ready for this. For the spirit of God is going to visit you. The great Jehovah wants to manifest himself to you. And he's saying this, you need to begin to seek me on a daily basis, hunger and thirst after me for you shall be filled. And God is saying this now, you better come after me because there are great and mighty things that I'm trying to reveal to you. There are secrets that God wants to reveal. There are things that he wants to show you. There are things that's been freely given that he wants to manifest to you. And he's saying this, he says, come out of your low, come out of your sleep. I'm going to allow you to enjoy life. I'm going to allow you to be around people. Come on, come on, God. I hear this. I hear this. He says there, some of you so admiring people in the world that you downplay who your God is. You are, you listen, you will lift up a sinner who ain't living no life before God. That's why I tell folks, you better be mindful who you call your goals. Who are your goals? That's go. You don't even know their lifestyle. 
just because they got a house and a car. God will do all of that and then some. But do they have moral character and stability? You celebrating people who cheat on their wife and their husbands. And God is saying this. I'm the standard. You're the standard, church. Stop belittling who you are to now uplift somebody that's supposed to come to you for the answers. See, uh, see, see some of y'all, uh, you got to be ready for this. You got to be ready. I'm not talking about a, conk, a cockiness. That's why, listen, I've never been a star studied person. I've never been that person. Oh, my God, look at who that is. Uh-uh. You need what I got. I'm God's representative. You need to sit down and listen to what thus saith the Lord. And God is flipping the script now. And he's putting people who know who they are, who know who their God is, to go into avenues and to go into these places and to see the power of God manifest. And it's coming so. Listen, it is so. It is so. And they will crumble and they will cry and they will break and say, what must I do, man and woman of God, to be saved? Because my life is out of order and God is going into the crevices. There are people who are balled up in corners, in darkness. And God is saying, I'm going in and I'm snatching them out. This is a mass recovery effort because Jesus said, I'm coming soon. So it's time for you to gather as many people as you can into this thing. It's time to preach like we've never preached before. God is saying it's time to amp up your preaching engagement. It's time to amp up your, co your communion or communication with the community. It's time to amp it up. And people who have mocked our God, they will come back and say, I was wrong. You listen, you serve the true and the living God. I listen. What is it that God is telling you? There is a switch that's taking place. And this is how we're praying. Come on, intercessors. You need to hear what I'm saying. It's time to begin to pray that we have influence with leaders in our communities. We are the influencers. We speak truth to power. We declare and decree things. We speak to nations. We speak to governors. We speak to mayors. And they have to bow down to the church of the living God. For the time has come, says the spirit of the living God. And it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. Stop looking for somebody else's platform. God said, I'm going to give you your own platform if you just nurture it right. He says, be faithful over the little and I'll make your rulers over much. Stop looking for man's approval. God says, I've already approved you. Stop looking for man's approval to say, go ahead and do what I've already told you to do. I told you to do it. He said, confer no longer with flesh and blood. Go forth and do the thing I've created you to do because you already equipped and anointed to get the job done. And I'm telling you now, God is going to he's going to fill your mouth with fire that is going to purge stuff out of the lives of people. And God is saying, stop, stop. Oh, calm down, boy. Calm down. He's saying this. Stop suppressing who you are to make people feel comfortable. This is what happens. Now, let me give you some wisdom here, because I know it's coming out with power, with fire and intensity. Does that mean you got to have wisdom? The Bible says this, he who wins souls is wise. And there's wisdom when you go into the room with individuals and you can speak with, convic with conviction without being condemning because God loves them. And the spirit of love still has to be the supporting factor. But we know, see, sometimes when... When, I, when I'm preaching against stuff, sometimes I'm coming against the spirit behind what's motivating the individual or what's behind what's trying to manipulate the scene. The principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places. We take authority over those things. This word power also means the power and influence which belong to riches and wealth. Yep, we saying it again. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Wealth and riches. There is money that is being dumped into the body of Christ, but you got to know what to do with it. You got to know what to do with it. And God is saying, you're going you gonna to be able to handle plenty. I'm going to go ahead and speak it over you. You're going to be able to handle plenty. And so that you have the stuff, but the stuff doesn't have you. 
And so that now when resources are coming to your hands, it's going to be more than enough than what you can handle. And then now God's going to say, okay, I want you to disperse it here. I want you to distribute it here. Sometimes harvest that you get in ain't your harvest. Sometimes it's harvest that you need to transfer to somebody else. So whenever, before you do anything, ask the Lord, what shall I do with this? What shall I do with this? Is this my portion to enjoy? Or is this something I need to hold to now dispense good to somebody else? And as you do that, you become God's financier in the earth. You become the one who is his underwriter. You become the one who goes out. You're going to be his venture capitalist. You're going to be the one that brings in the resources and say, okay, God, what needs to be done? As I begin to pray in this time, I begin to see. I begin to see once again. I begin to write the vision to make it plain. And one of the things God had given me, and I'm going to just share this real quick, and I'm going to do this in a more formal way when we do a Vision Sunday, but I got to begin to speak it. Because that was one of the things he told me to begin to say. He says this, I want you to show them what it is that's about to manifest. He says, I've told you to focus in on five areas he told us to do. He says, media, outreach, discipleship, evangelism, and then his last one, love or fellowship. We demonstrate our love through our fellowship, the coming together, to now build community, to build individuals. He says, I want that to be the catalyst of what you do, that there's going to be a strong media presence so that as this word goes out, he says, I want you to build locally, but I want you to think globally. That even as you build locally, even as you begin to now build in the communities around you, he began to show me as a prophet of God, he said, prophets can go into environments and begin to speak into those environments and it will transform and change the environments that they're speaking into. He says that there are people, there are, there are some false ones out there, but they don't recognize who they are. They desire the office of prophet, but they weren't ordained to be prophets. And God is saying, I'm raising up true prophets who understand who they are. But watch this. They're going to be able to function in areas of business, in areas of politics and policies that now he says this, they are going to be people who are going to be so keen and sound in wisdom and in judgment and to do business well, that there will be supernatural things that God begins to bring up. There will be deals that you will begin to see that other people can't see. And they're going to tell you that's a bad investment. But you know that the Holy Spirit is telling you, I want you to buy that land. It's going to be like Jacob and Laban. That he said this. He says, okay, you can take all the spotted ones, but then God did this. He flipped the script on them. He took what Jacob received and flipped it and made it better than what Laban had. And that's what God is saying. I'm about to do the same thing now. There are going to be properties that seem dilapidated in value, but once they transfer into your hands, then the property value is about to elevate and to go up. And people are going to say, you're doing stupid stuff, but once it's all said and done, they're going to come to you and say, will you teach me how you knew that? Will you teach me how did you hear that? And God is saying this, your investments are about to turn around for the good because they're in your hands. There are companies I'm keeping open just because my people are working there because I got to get my money to them and that's the only way or funnel that they have allowed me to do it. He says, if you begin to set up new streams of income, I will begin to funnel new resources to you as you set up these structures and these entities. God is saying this, there is a supernatural elevation that is taking place in the body of Christ and my people are coming to be more keen and sound. And there are people who have been in areas of dilapidation that they are in the projects and there are projects that are being shut down. But God is saying, in this moment where it seems like they're being dispersed, my body is coming in and you're going to begin to build houses. You're going to begin to build properties. You're going to begin to build apartment complexes. You're going to begin to build strip malls and you're going to set people up to now begin to cause the economy to come up in areas where it seems like the enemy came in. 
because you will speak to that spirit of poverty that's behind it. It's a principality that has ruled for years and for centuries in areas. And God is saying this, you're going to come in with my power and with my glory and you will dispossess those wicked spirits, and then their minds will be open to see what God is saying. And you will begin to train them to come up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And now, where there was great sorrow, there should be great rejoicing. You thought Black Wall Street was something. You ain't seen nothing yet, body of Christ, for I'm raising up billionaires, even trillionaires, people in the oil industry, in technology, that you're going to begin to see to come forth like never before, and my wealth shall be dispersed across this land. For it is so, saith the Lord. Whew. This word ability also means power and resources arising from numbers. Many hands make light work. <laughs> In modern day vernacular, we all gonna eat. <laughs> yeah, we all going to eat. It's time for the, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, hood. I'm coming for all my hood brothers and sisters. I'm coming for you now. I'm coming for you. God is placing homage to come. God is placing anointing on us. <laughs> hey, hey, it might be a dirty job, but we're going to look good doing it, baby. Yeah, we're going to floss for the kingdom. God is saying this, it's time to bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light, Moses. It's time to lead them into the promised land. It's time to lead them into a good life. And you cannot lead people where you have not been exposed. And so God, your exposure is about to increase. It's time for you to stretch out. It's time for you to think bigger, to think greater, to believe for more, says God. He says, open up your eyes. Let your spiritual eyes be open. Let your spiritual eyes be open to see. I don't care what your mom and daddy didn't do. He says, you going to do it. He says, you going to do it. You going to make your, ooh, yeah, you going to make your name great. Your name shall be known and it shall be great. It shall be associated with character. It shall be associated with opulence. It shall be associated with excellence. It shall be associated with grace and power. It shall be associated with resources and territory. It shall be associated. And yeah, I hear this too. He says the educational system is about to experience a great shaking right now. The educational system. And you're about to see resources for those that have been marginalized, those that have been forgotten. You're going to see great resources transfer over. And yeah, and we command the new buildings to be built. We command it. Whatever is tried to stop it, we dispossess that spirit now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we command that thing to be removed and the wealth shall come forth from the soil of the land. And there shall be great, great, great discoveries. That's the word. Great discoveries upon land, great discoveries in land that you've owned, that you've forgotten about. Great discoveries where I will supernaturally transfer resources to those areas. Natural resources will cause great wealth and increase to come into your house. Whew, yeah, this is serious. This is a strong word. This is a strong word, body of Christ. This is a strong word. I told you you were supposed to tell people to set some watch parties. See, some of y'all been playing with us. You've been playing. You better, you better receive this anointing. Listen, whoever receives a prophet receives the prophet's reward. You better receive what thus saith the Lord. And it is so. I mark this word in the spirit this day. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass at last. Glory to God. Stop believing for secondhand furniture. Go for the best. God said, believe me. And I, he said, I, didn't I not tell you in my word that I'll give you houses that you did not build and I'll fill them with good things? He says this, trust me for the good. Trust me for the better. Trust me for opulence. Trust me for excellence. For you deserve it, says the Lord. You ain't got to wait till you get to heaven to experience it. He says, I want you to experience it here. So when you get there, you already used to it. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done. Whoo, whew. God wants a fresh fire to hit his people. 
that have been stagnant and dry. The only good thing about dry wood, dry wood catch on fire faster. He says there's going to be a fire that hits. There's going to be a fire that hits. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Shikrabme ne kumbra. The force, the force of faith, the force of the anointing should cause things to come to pass. Yeah. And Jesus said it like this. Whoo. Whoo. In, in Matthew 28 and 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yeah. This is another phrase I want you to see. Passion without a plan or direction will just be unfulfilled desire. Passion without a plan or direction will just be unfulfilled desires. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples that after they receive this power, that they will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the world. He gave them direction to focus their passion on. He says, start local and then go global. Start where you are and begin to expand. Start with what you got and I'll take you where I want to get you to. So oh, glory to God. Sometimes you're so busy looking at where you're trying to get to the end result that you're neglecting starting where you are because you think you don't have enough because you're seeing the end from the beginning. But the only thing about it is you got to start at the beginning to get to the end. And he says, start where you are. Start with the one thing. Start with the two things. He says, what do you have in your hands? Because what you have is all you need. And all I need is all that you have. Because I'll put my blessing on it. And I'll cause it to multiply and to expand. He says, just do it well and give it everything you got. And you'll begin to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. It's time for the book of Acts in a greater way to be revealed. Who the Bible, even in Acts, was a documentary of the early church. They call it the Acts of the Apostles, but it was the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Uh, see, I'm about to say something. I don't know if y'all ready to hear that. Uh, y'all call it blasphemy. I don't even know what I want to say. Let me pose it as a question. What if you and I are the new story to be told? in another universe. I, 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 know, I, know, <laughs> I know I'm messing with y'all there. The universe is ever expanding and growing. We're to rule and reign with Christ throughout eternity. The earth is supposed to be heaven's headquarters. It's going to be renovated. The new Jerusalem is going to be here. The throne of God will be here. God is a creator. That means he never stops creating. Creation is going on now. Creativity is going on now. God is not stagnant. He who he's not stagnant. He's ever flowing. He's ever moving. See, when you get to know your God, you know how he is. And when he begins to reveal himself, I remember I just heard this. A brother that had a, um, a heavenly encounter and went to heaven and he talked about the angels of God who went about the throne shouting, holy, holy, holy. He says the reason why they did is because every time they went around the throne, they saw another facet of God that they had not seen before. You're you, you going to miss this. You, you got to watch this. How and this has been done for eons. Just how big is our God? Our minds can't fathom. How great Jehovah is. You are so suppressed, God. God, we've suppressed you. He says, I want you to expand your vision of me. This is why he says to come up hither. Come up hither. Come up hither. From your seated position in me. To begin to see. Think from a seated position. Think the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And Father, we are your representatives. 
What property do you want me to acquire next? We acquire it. We take authority and we claim it in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. This is this, just this flat out demonstration time. This flat out demonstration time. Demonstration. More will come. After the demonstration, I'll teach some other things. More will come. More will come. More will come. You have power. Lay hands on yourself. Yeah, lay hands. For some of you right now, there are areas in your body that have been giving you trouble. Lay hands on that area right now in the name of Jesus. Lay, lay hands on it, lay, wherever you are. Now, hurry up, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to do it. Now, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I command you to take your hands off of their bodies now. I command those areas to be completely healed and restored right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, where there are imps or devils or demons behind it, I command you to be gone. And where there's physical healing that needs to take place, I command your bodies to be made whole and restored now in Jesus' name. Now, you need to receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just wrote this prayer, this quick prayer to pray over you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that a passion and fire for your kingdom agenda will be ignited in your people. I speak over this local body, Spirit of Fire Fellowship, concerning that. I speak over the body of Christ concerning that. And we passionately pursue your purpose and plan for us, collectively, but also individually. Now, I pray for great manifestations to take place in these coming days, weeks, months, and even years. May great glory take place. Great manifestation take place in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, listen, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to now repeat this prayer simply after me. Listen, come on to the kingdom side. Say, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I'll make you the Lord of my life. Say thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Next, you're born again and you know it, but you've been lacking power. The Bible says, but you should receive power after that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, Jesus said. Now, the Bible also declares whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That has to include the Holy Spirit. If that's you, if you've never received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues, I want you to receive them today. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. Baptize me in your power and in your presence. I thank you now that you live in me. I receive you to live in me. I declare According to the word of God, I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I want you to do this. Lift up your hands. Come on, we're going to begin to pray. Come on, I want you to begin to open up your mouth. The Holy Spirit is going to help you all right now. Let them feel you. Yeah, he'll fill your mouth. He'll give you understanding. You have to talk. You have to speak. He gives the, he gives the utterance. But you have to open up your mouth and speak. As you add voice, open up your mouth, moving your lips. Words are going to begin to come up in you. And they, they may just sound weird to your head, but begin to speak them. That's your heavenly language flowing through now. In the name of Jesus. Hombre shakano, hombre fresh te Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now listen. Amen. Listen. We're excited for you. If you got born again or got filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to know. Reach out to us. Send us a message. Let us know, hey, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I got born again. And we want to help you grow in your understanding of the things of God. To train, to develop you in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So we just thank God for you showing up today. Listen, if you desire to connect and join this ministry, you don't have a church home. You need pastors to help oversee you. We welcome you to Spirit of Fire today. If that's you, and say, you know what? I want to connect. I'm being fed by the word. I'm a man that I just received. I'm growing as I'm hearing this word. It's something that's been different. It's, it's transforming me. It's changing me. And I feel like I need to join and connect with this work. We want you to join us today. Listen, for some of you that may say, you know what? I already have a church home. Listen, we don't want you to leave your church home. If that's what God has called you to be, great. If you want to join and connect with us as a partner with this ministry, to say, okay, I'll pray for you, I'll sow, I'll support. That's the part I know I can play and I feel like I'm supposed to do. Let us know that as well so we can now help you connect through partnership. Right, listen, we got to get this work done. There's much to be done, much to be done. As I said before, um, I just shared a very, very little, very little today dealing with some of the vision, but I'm going to begin to do a vision day. We're in preparation to do it. We're going to organize everything to present it right to you and just show you what's just on our hearts, what God is revealing and showing us to do. And so we want to share and also give some timelines for certain things to say, okay, this is what we're working on first. This is what we're moving towards so that everybody is in one accord in agreement and in harmony and in unity for us to accomplish this work, this kingdom work together. We love you so much. We appreciate you at this time. Listen, for those, we call this opportunity for prosperity time, for us to begin to sow and to plant in the work that God has given for us to do. Listen, we want you to sow. We want you to give. Listen, we want you to be, listen, for those that have gotten off of even tithing, listen, get back into the habit, habit and rhythm of tithing, honoring God with the first tenth, that first tenth of your income, your increase. God says this, the heavens will be open upon your life and that you will see things here, rebuke the devourer for your sake. Listen, I'm telling you, he, the enemy won't be able to destroy, to kill, still, and to destroy. Listen, when you tithe and you honor God with that gift, I'm telling you, man, it'll cause things to last longer, to work better. I'm just telling you, things work better in your life for those that are tithers. I'm telling you, because you're honoring God. It's a trust relationship. You're honoring him with your substance. Your money represents your livelihood, your sweat, your blood, your tears, your effort. You know, we work 40, 60, 80 hours a week to just make money, to take care of families and to do things that we desire to do. And God says, will you allow me to get involved in your finances? And he says, I'll cause you to grow and to increase. And so, listen, we are a testament to that. We understand, we know that God is faithful to do what his word declares that he will do. So at this time, there's information that's on your screen to show you different ways and avenues in which you can give. And we want you to do it with joy, with cheer, and with that great expectation. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm gonna give you that opportunity. And so at this time, we just wanna say, once again, thank you for showing up. I pray that you were blessed today. I know I was. <laughs> so listen, we wanna, you may have to go back, listen to this thing again, get it in your spirit good, write down some notes. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you as you're hearing this, there's something that I'm preaching, but then something is resonating in you. And sometimes you might be focused on one thing that was said, then you miss the other things that were said because you were just chewing on that one part. I know what that's like. So I really encourage you to go back, listen to it again, share it with as many people as you can. Say, hey, you need to, girl, you need to hear this. Bro, you need to hear this word that pastor preached. Put it out there, share it with the people. Share it with people, share the gospel with them, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, guys, I pray for your well-being. I pray that all things are well with you and your families. I declare and decree the best is yet to come. And so I thank God for you. God bless you. May the Lord watch between me and thee and us and thee. And so, you know, we say that back in the day. And so we just thank God for you supporting us today. Hey, this is Pastor Mike once again with Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we are changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living the dream. God bless you all. I'll see you next time.
Peace.